Hi, today we're sharing a fabulous project from Dom Remy College and then we'll be taking you through some drawing exercises. Thanks to the TAS staff who always have fabulous projects, can't wait to show you what they've got. Geometric Horizons, so it's based on geometric shapes. These examples are all from Year 9 students. So the young ladies have great skills to be able to draw and then laser cut these shapes out. This one, the way it fits, is absolutely fantastic. It looks like an ice castle. Everything needs um, a good designs, need a bit of design interest. This one, because you can see through to the layers behind, lots of visual interest. Uh, sometimes it's hard to get the base to look like it's meant to go with the top. This one does it beautifully. The nice round curves match the round curves. Uh, lots of visual interest here. Fabulous. Uh, amazing product, whatever this acrylic is with the goldy kind of shapes. Fantastic. Natural timber works with the natural beeswax kind of theme going on. Uh, beautifully finished jobs. Well done. For the other schools, first jumping into this project, this one could be done by hand, doesn't need laser cut. Uh, the, the top um, plunges through a saw cut down into the base and that adds the visual interest that this project otherwise very simple elements but well finished and uh, well done. The top relates to the bottom just by the fact that the width of the sides meet up so beautifully with the base and just allows the product to be on show here. So simple but effective. This one is simple but just relies on the curve of the plastic um, to, to be the hero because really it disappears and it's just the cascade of this beautiful uh, necklaces that are really on show here and that works a treat I think. Here's some solid timber. Um, it's not so much what they've got, it's what they haven't got. Look, this is based on a triangle and because of these elements which would normally join here, uh, it makes your eye run backwards and forwards here and creates a, the visual interest. Interestingly, they've also carved this out so it's performing two functions, it's holding those as well. Great job. This is not geometric. Um, this is more, these sort of flowing lines are organic. And the visual interest is uh, the graphics here remind us of something that we already know and love, some bears. Doesn't have a complicated base, very simple, just some pins here or feet that go backwards and help it balance. This is a, a simple design, geometric, um, big bold opening. It's the quality of the lettering, everything's well organized, well finished off, no scratches and dents, and it just looks quality and that's creates the visual interest for us. This one reminds us of something we love as well, and that is little fish. And so uh, it's the etching of the, the tank shape that works here. These look like little air bubbles. And um, the base kind of works because it, these would normally sit on a table and this kind of looks like a tabletop-ish. So that one can get away with that. This is a commercial product made in a factory and Looks um, like it'd break a little bit. Looks, um, I think it's just practical. You can put lots of jewelry in here and then close it up so it doesn't take too much space. So um, no awards for the design, unfortunately. But with your project, if you're designing it, you can't let this be the hero. You have to come up with a, a winning design. Uh, this one we've seen. And here's some more of the beehive theme just carried right through and it's what they've left off the outside this unusual shape I think adds a bit of visual interest also the base works well because you can see the grain running this way grain running this way this is a pretty boring design my eye is um, circling all over here looking for some little design feature but I can't see any um, it probably gets points for it flat packs to something really thin and light and would cost almost nothing to post so um, in terms of profits, good. In terms of design, not so good. If I covered this, if I put my hand over the base and just looked at the top, it would look like a bit of stationery, but the base works well with this because of the way they um, intersect and plunge through each other like that, and it's well finished. Nice job. This little design is interesting. It kind of looks like a cactus. Um, the base 
at first glance wouldn't really go with this, but it kind of works. And I think it's because these round caps that are repeated here, it's also repeated in the shape of this. Also, if it was a potted plant, you'd expect to see the top of a flower pot kind of like this too. This one doesn't have any visual interest. It's only for the earrings that are creating a bit of color and visual interest here. So this is more like a just a canvas that's displaying the work. Not really a considered design so much. More just purely functional and cheap. Now it's time for some drawing practice. We're going to help you with the skills to communicate and to think and encourage your creativity. They start off simple and progress to something a little more challenging. But if you only manage to get through the early ones, those are the essential skills that you can take and practice and become an excellent designer. What are thumbnail sketches? Tiny sketches, quick sketches, and that's where creativity occurs. We've got orthogonal or isometric. Let's have a look what these mean. Using the Splat 3D tool, we're drawing three lines, left, right, and vertical. Those are the isometric angles. And most of the drawings we'll be showing you today are drawn on those three angles, with the exception maybe of something that's on a slight lean. So the front view, I would see that rectangle. Let's draw a surface, maybe a tabletop, with that front block sitting on it, and above would be the plastic or acrylic. Let's label our view, the front view. Okay, so if we take a view from the left-hand side, we would also see a smaller rectangle and the acrylic. So on the left of the front view is the left-hand side view with the acrylic going back. Okay, so the acrylic is uh, not quite high enough there, so let's extend that. All of the parts should be the same height, no matter where we spin them around. So on the right hand side, let's draw our block and plastic lining up with those guidelines. They can be imaginary. Remember these are just really quick um, thumbnail sketches. Remember with your isometric view, the difference is that the corner is closest to you and both of the sides are sloping away. That's what isometric means, they're tipped up at the same angle. And of course we also see a top view. That's the really cool thing about isometric views. Pencil, eraser and splat. Notice there's two little blips on each side. Those are really important. Hold your splat at the top, hold it straight up and down. On your starting point, we're drawing just four lines, not a whole box. So we'll go vertical, from the blip, down and around slide up and just draw in that last line. Great. Now from three points, one there, two, three, we're going to draw some short lines and they'll be on that isometric angle. Hang on that one over to the right. That's the angle. So you can use the splat to help you get that angle. Let's make them all the same length and nice and short. Now to join them up, Really, we want to learn how to, how to draw with free hands. So let's have a go. The lines will be a little more wobbly, but with some practice, it is by far the quickest way to draw. Just a few little thin um, light lines makes it look like a, a reflection. Pick a starting point just to the right of the last one. And from the blip, we're coming down and around. Same vertical. Slide up. This time we're drawing a flat piece of plastic, but going away on the other angle. So this is the direction that we need to draw our short lines on. Remember the three corners. Boom. Two, three. I'm just going to freehand those in. And it's okay, joining them up. All right. So there's our two... Um, there's our two flat pieces of plastic and they're both vertical. We're going to have a go at drawing one flat. So come down to a new starting point, round about there. This one will be overlapping. So draw up and up on the other side. Turn the splat upside down, line up those corners with the ends of those lines. And we'll be drawing in the far two corners. 
of this piece of plastic. Skip over that one. Remember we're overlapping, so draw to that and skip over. Overlapping is a powerful way to help that 3D effect. Now our vertical lines come down from those three corners and join them up. Here's a cheats way to do it. We could have used the splat in the original position, slid down a little bit and used that to draw in those lines. But I'm glad you had to go up freehand. That is the bomb. Okay, um, now if you want um, if you want to draw the plastic, you'll see just a little bit like that. It gets distorted near the edges. So I just leave it like that. But um, if you wanted it to look like glass or something with rounded edges, that line gets distorted when it gets near the edge. So you can just flick it backwards and forwards. It doesn't matter which way. So that's kind of like the, the visual symbol for, for those. And, and the edges, the line gets actually turned upwards like that. Pick a new spot on your page and let's draw a whole box. Sometimes it's called crates, crating, this type of drawing where we make boxes and then draw things inside them. So we have a very light box and I'm going to go halfway up and I'm drawing two more lines. That will be um, how high the base will be now. I'm going to erase those lines. I don't need those at the bottom. And I think the base is a little bit too long, so let's use one of our isometric lines and going down there. And that's about how big I'd like the base to be, so I'll firm that in for the moment. All right, halfway along there, I'm imagining where the slot is that I'm going to place the acrylic in. Come straight up and draw just like we did before actually, we've already drawn one right there. What are we missing? Yep, the thickness of the plastic in three places. Let's connect those up. Now what if we wanted it to lean back just slightly? Well, um, what we could all exaggerate here, from these two corners I'm going to draw a line in that direction but probably that's that's as far as you'd go. You probably don't want to lean it back too far. Make sure those are the same length. Let's check by running a line across the top. Yep, now it's a case of joining the top to the bottom. Let's have a go freehand from there to there. Let's draw a line. Don't worry if your lines are a bit wavy when you're a beginner. You will um, get better, I guarantee. And we could bring the slot down into the timber. All right, so with a little bit of erasing, that is a very basic design for a jewelry rack. Now I'm playing around um, with the shape. I could have like a rhombus uh, at the bottom. I could have a trapezium. So I'm just drawing, sketching light lines and I'm thinking as I go. So I'm going to erase that now and I'm cutting some of the timber at the base away. I'm coming up with a new shape. And I'm going to reflect that highly, um, not organic, maybe geometric kind of shape in the side as well to create a little bit of interest. Doing that um, jagged line all the way around might be a little bit too much. I could add some nails at the front and hang rings on or some small hoops. Time to imagine a new design. So very lightly, let's have a go at drawing a short box. Um, I think I've forgotten the lines at the side, so let's go back to the starting position and draw those in. Far lines. Okay, uh, let's see. Looks a little bit too long, so I'm going to halve that. But you can see the direction of the base. Uh, let's see. We could draw um, some acrylic on top like that. It's always a good starting place. Well, these are sort of drawing exercises. You know, your design might not look like this, but by following these exercises, uh, you'll be able to draw anything you can imagine. Here I'm imagining a piece, of one, a strip of acrylic that's been bent around. Some schools have a strip heater to do this with acrylic. I could cut a slot in it. I probably would have to cut the slot before I bend it, especially if I'm using a laser cutter. 
and uh, let's have a go at drawing a triangle base. So I'm using a, a crate or a box and then I'm drawing, sketching the triangle inside that. So those slopey lines, remember, aren't your isometric lines, but the box that you draw first up to create this triangle is. Let's sketch a slot in there. This is one of my isometric lines. Any, any lines that are flat or vertical will be isometric. It doesn't matter that your sketches overlap I'm going to start by, like we did before, drawing a flat surface, but instead of drawing that line across the top, I'm going to keep extending upwards. Now it's twice as high as it is wide. Let's give it some thickness. And let's roughly freehand those lines in. All right, let's have a go at drawing a base. Some of you will be adding um, bases like something like this. So draw on the splat or isometric angle some lines, both the same length. And then from the starting point, come upwards. I'm going to join the ends of those. And you can see I've got a triangle piece of plastic and now a bit of thickness. Hmm, I wonder how I could join those on. <clears throat> Let me have a go at sketching um, a slot in this piece of plastic. And now, when those slots join together, that would be how the base could join. Well, that wiggly line means the, the material keeps going, but you don't need to see it all. So I'm cutting that off. And I'm using an isometric line to imagine an array. Lots of little holes in a line. We could have some cutouts or openings. And some of the, some of the openings could be on the edge. What about if I add a little hook detail onto that? And that could be for uh, storing some of the bigger hoop earrings and things like that. How about some uh, circular shape cutouts? In this one, I've sped up the drawing. I'm basically drawing a piece of acrylic. And then I'm using the other angle to help guide another piece crisscrossing over so we held in by slotting them again just to show you how you could flip that splat over to draw use the little ones um, little notches in the top for hanging necklaces earrings and what about if you wanted a design um, that went into the corner uh, on your desk well I've got two pieces of plastic here but how could I join them I could have a third piece of plastic that um, joins in. I could uh, have holes and stitch for some leather or something, or I could use a detail like that, that called a finger join. Some little pegs in the opening. Here's another way to show you drawings. What about if um, this thumbnail shows a little round piece of wood holding the acrylic? Um, I'm drawing in, uh, like a close-up view of a detail. I've got a big chunky piece of wood, a hole in the acrylic, and a cap in the front. So there's a peg that goes through the hole and into the other piece of wood. Uh, let's do some annotation here. So we're using arrows and naming the parts. Here's another way to show uh, your design intent. That's looking side on at the acrylic with a cut through. So this is called a section. And I've got the parts here that hatching is in a different direction for each different part that you've got. That's where the ground would be. Let's label the ground line. And that's a break line. It means that it keeps going, but you don't need to see any more. Looks like that. Thanks so much for joining me today. Can I say thank you again to the fabulous staff and students at Don Remy. Uh, I thank you so much for sharing your project with us. And I hope some other schools get some benefit from this as well. I'm Glennie D. See you next time. Bye.